Hello YouTubers, this is a geek must have with a project build for a naked digital do-it-yourself electronic clock with a phone charger for under seven dollars. Watch this video to see how this was built. This project started out as a lazy Sunday afternoon project of the construction of an electronic clock kit that I won on eBay for one dollar. It was mislabeled CLOKC and nobody else had found it yet. Now I'm told by better eBayers than me that if you look for misspelled items on an auction you may luck out and get a deal. Now, in reality, it actually took longer than a Sunday afternoon to build this. But I learned quite a bit, and I was able to add a phone charger to it. I've already opened the package to take a look inside, but there are the instructions, which are in, let me guess, Chinese. But the parts list was complete, and the circuit diagram on the back here was very helpful. So the rest of the package is a circuit board. Ah, pretty good silk screen quality. Pretty much showing you where all the parts go. A couple of buttons. The LED, uh, the piezo speaker, where the power goes. Good solder mask on the back as well. It comes with the uh, four digit display. Comes with a socket for the 89C2051. That's probably a good idea if you're not really good at soldering. It comes with a crystal. It says 12... 12,000... And a little piezo speak, piezoelectric speaker. And the important part is this... Eight nine C twenty fifty one chip. It shows here that pins four and five are where that uh, twelve dot zero 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 quartz crystal for the oscillator goes. Pins eight and nine have the two little push button switches on them to allow you to change the settings. Pins twelve through 19 actually drive the four digit display. Pin 20 is where the voltage comes in and it appears to be going to a 1k resistor bank that are drop down resistors for the various seg for the various segments here. There's also a on pin 3 is a little transistor being used as an amplifier to drive the piezo. And there's also a jack on here for five volts input. It looks like a filtering capacitor on there. I like to sort out all my parts for any kit that I build uh, using my high-tech electronic parts bin storage unit my muffin tin from the dollar store. And if I get this kit to work, the plan is to power it from an 18650 battery with a boost converter to boost this 3.7 volts up to 5 and provide a way to charge the battery with a micro or a mini USB charger.
So to verify that I get the switches installed the right way, hooked up the multimeter and I pressed the button. So then I know that the legs that are on this side of the switch are the ones that will connect, that need to connect between here, the top and the bottom of those. Here is the finished electronic digital clock kit and it's running and the seven segment digits are flickering and I understand this is a uh, some type of an effect caused because of the video camera but uh, if we slip a piece of red cellophane over it it kind of reduces the effect a little bit and makes it a little more legible. I'll have to take my word for it that it is much easier to read. Because there was no manual for this electronic clock kit, I did a little research and found an article by Clobber24, which I'll put a link to in the description below, on how to do the setting. And it's the two buttons here, I'll call this the A button and the B button, or the one button and the two button. If you press number one, A sets the hour, which is 2100 right now. B sets the minutes, which is 29 minutes. C says turn the chime for the alarm on or off. It's turned off right now. D is for whether alarm 1 is set on or off. And if it's on, then E and F are used to set the hours and the minutes. And G is off. That's the second alarm, which you can set on or off. And then H and I are for setting both the hour and minutes for the second alarm. And then you use the B button to go through the numbers and to turn it on and off. Uh, there is some button bounce. This effect where when you press a button it actually does a bounce and you get like two or three digits where it's going forward. So when you're setting the time you may have to you know, go past the hour that you were setting to go completely around and set it again because of the button bounce that happens. But you know, it's not like you set this clock every day. The battery I plan on using to power this electronic clock is one of these 18650s. I have it in one of the battery holders and it's running at 4.05 volts. It would appear that the clock when it's a running uses 0 0.061 of an amp or 61 milliampers. After figuring out that this 18650 battery at uh, 1065 milliampere hours running the clock at 60 milliampere hours would only run the clock for about 17 and a half hours and most likely less than that. I decided that the 18650 would be the backup battery in case of a power failure. Now the 18650 runs through a single cell charge and protection board. This charge board can both charge the battery and run the clock at the same time. I can use any micro USB power source including like a wall ward or a computer to power the clock. The four and eight. Sorry, the, I'm not sure. And the four point seven volts from the charge board is fed to the boost converter. This typically would have been used as a power bank converter, and this boosts the voltage from four point seven volts to five to five and a half volts to power the clock. 
the red LED on the boost converter shows that the board is working. When I plug a USB power cable into the charge controller, the red LED indicates that the battery is being charged and the little blue LED next to it when it's lit indicates when the battery is fully charged which should be most of the time. The charge converter also prevents the battery from being overcharged from it being plugged into the wall most of the time. Now on to building the case for this thing. I could 3D print a box for it but I'm having problems with my 3D printer right now because it's still in the box unassembled. Yeah, I fell a little behind in my building schedule. The idea of building a case for this electronic clock was thrown out after I had a discussion with Amy, one of my coworkers, about why would I build a case for a $1 clock and it kind of dawned on me, why not just mount it on a piece of acrylic? So that's basically what I've done. Now I need to take the battery case for the 18650 and attach it to the board. So I'll use a little hot glue. And stick it on to the acrylic and hold it in place. It takes a little while for it to set. And that looks pretty sturdy. I had too much wire here, so I'm going to cut some of the wire off and make the wires a little bit shorter. If it was going to be inside of a regular enclosure, I guess it wouldn't make that much of a difference. So I shortened up the leads on these, basically dressing the wires up. I glued the charge controller in with a couple beads of hot glue on the side and a little bit along the back here because this is going to get not a whole lot of activity but enough. But enough. And of course, I managed to burn myself. I guess it's not a project unless you burn yourself with a hot glue at least once. And let's see if the charge controller still works. And there it is. It's lit up red. And the little LED that's blue next to it lights up when it's fully charged. Now I'm going to glue this little red piece of cellophane over the front of the display. This is going to be a little tricky. A little bit of white clear Gorilla Glue to glue that. I'm going to do it while the clock is on. Now I'll carefully place the red cellophane over the display and kind of align it a little bit and then hold it in place until the glue sets. Here's the cost breakdown for the project. There's the KLOKC kit that I got on eBay for a buck. The charge controller was 95 cents. The 5 volt boost converter was 88 cents. The most expensive part was the 18650 battery at 3 bucks. The battery holder was 50 cents and the four rubber project feet were 40 cents for a total of six dollars and 73 cents this video ended up being a little longer than i would have liked i learned a number of things with the project build that i just wanted to share i like the idea that the project is naked or circuits exposed makes it easy to explain how the parts come together to make an electronic clock with a 17 and a half hour standby 
and can charge a phone. If you were entertained, learned something, or laughed just a little, press that like button. Leave me a comment with suggestions, requests, or even criticisms. I try to respond to any and all comments. Show your support by subscribing to my channel. Every subscriber that I get makes me smile just a little bit more. My goal is 500 subscribers by the end of the year. Be one of those subscribers. I have a companion blog at geekmusthave.com where I ramble on about all things technical. Stop by and visit me. Thank you and have a good one.